clean up in aisle five. You're going to need tear gas, pepper spray, and assault gear just to listen to this show. <laughs> Sasquatch. The moon landing. UFOs. 9-11. Flat Earth. JFK. All of these things have one thing in common. Unanswered questions. So let's get to the bottom of that. Here we have liftoff. Ready for a contact. Now here's something completely random. Animals in action. Animals in action. Random. Uh, we using that in the intro? Thank you and good night. Dice Man Enterprises exclusively presents a talk show that will get to the bottom of things once and for all. And now here's your host for Let's Get to the Bottom of That, a bunch of weirdos on a mic. That's right. Welcome back into another episode of Let's Get to the Bottom of That. I'm your host, Byron Dice. And we are back for another episode. I appreciate all my conspiracy nuts tuning us in. You're listening to probably the best show on the internet where I'm joined each week by a bunch of weirdos. And we cover a topic that has been left out in the public square, unattended and covered with questions from the official story. So I want you to do me a favor. Sit back and relax. Get your tinfoil hats. Put them back on. And let's get to the bottom of Grace versus Works, what? episode 87. Welcome back into the show. I have heartburn. Jason. Did you say you had heartburn? Yeah, I had heartburn. Uh, we have a special guest on the show today because uh, I wanted someone with a different, unique perspective. Because actually, Grace versus Works is a little odd topic that right. you probably read across our feed grace versus works what, what the heck does that mean it's not a conspiracy and why is that a what conspiracy theory Byron. but do not tune out because we're going to have a little bible study here and i have none other uh, <laughs> did i sit on a whoopee cushion that's a heck of a welcome let's go um uh, welcome back to the program jacob russell What's up, guys? Thank you. Thank he, you. He, he does have creds for this topic. He is a an executive pastor. That is the title that he has donned. I am actually a scholar. And he's also a human with the brain. So, And I'm a poet. It's in there. You can have opinions and thoughts. Yeah, we, we got into that one time because uh, Joey kept saying, I'm not a scholar. And I think somebody always discredits themselves when they tar- start talking about the Bible. And I'm like, wait a minute, I can read. All right, I can't, <laughs> obviously. Full disclosure, my, my joke all the time at the church is uh, that I'm the only pastor on the pastoral team who didn't go to Bible college. Okay, good. So there's your caveat. Too. Well, there we go. So he is discredited. He's not a scholar yeah. either. Yep. There's yeah. no scholars here, but um, we can read. I'm okay, neither thanks, a gentleman guys. or but a you, <laughs> But you are, you're are swathy and smooth. That's what they say. <laughs> but I can't read. I'm just and saying, those are, those are two really legit adjectives. To have, I've never like, heard of them. And and to you, and for her to say that, it just fits because she's such a... Um, yeah, she keeps us in check. Yeah, for she keeps us in check uh, with our vocabulary. Or right. She's always, you know, hey, Byron, you can't pronunciate anything. I just mispronounced that. She's the show mama. Yeah. She is the show mama. Hey, dude, hey, I need a mom anywhere and everywhere because I need that kind of help. So I get it. Shout out to the moms. Yeah. I yeah. We just passed Mother's Day. Shout out. To, hey, Mom, thanks for the you egg. Know, I had a mom mm. when I was younger. I hated my mom. What? Whoa. Is this something we What's should talk about on the air? It was a quote from Joker. I hated my mom. Oh. I thought he was about to go lay on the couch. I thought. We were going to change the right. subject matter for today. Like. Yeah, because he has told me a backstory. It is. It's. Uh, yeah. The story was back. He's back out there. He's out in the desert, and it's not good. Dude. Aliens. Yeah. Man, that would be fun for you guys to ever do like a, a personal testimony type episode or anything about kind of your background, how you got so here yeah, where you are today. Yeah, interesting. Like to your beliefs. Yeah, because like everybody why, that's why. listening knows that we're born again Christians. Yeah, but I mean, just what I know from all of y'all's different stories, like every, like different stories to tell. 
Yeah. Well, right? Like, I think and everybody's and I, got a story. One of different spaces through. Right. Like, I always joke to everyone, like, if, if I was at a car show, I would be in the work in progress section. <laughs> and I plan to be there for the rest of my life because there's always going to be stuff to work on. I'm in the junkyard. <laughs> it's um, just close your eyes and visualize what, what it could be. No, right. Like, <laughs> I'd like to think of myself that I've, I've been restored. Amen. Restoration. Amen. So I may have been in the junkyard. Mm. That kind of gets into like the grace and works that we're oh about to talk God. about. Uh, uh, have you ever seen a car that's been restored? It's yeah. actually better than the original. We'll just let that float right there. Just let it marinate. Okay. Um, okay, so today our topic is grace versus works. And the reason I brought this up is because it's it may be it may not be conspiratorial, but it is controversial. Because there's two side, there's two camps on this thought. Now I don't know if you know this. I uh, I I'm willing to learn because I now, don't know how to read. I'm going to read. I'm going to sit. So here's here's how I want to frame this. I'm I'm going to read. Okay, first of all, let's let's go ahead and rationalize everybody's position. Mm-hmm. Um, where do you stand, or where do you rationalize your position on grace versus works when we're talking about your eternal life, my salvation? Yes. My works do nothing towards my salvation. I am saved and promised eternal life through the grace of God, through the death of Jesus Christ on okay. the cross. Mm. All right. that, that's not to discount works. I don't mean it by that by oh, any means. Oh, sure. But, but that's, that's where, but you, yeah, that's, that's where your that's position where is. Yeah, yeah you, okay. could be the, you could be the best man in the world, but if you didn't accept Jesus into your heart, okay, you, you ain't going nowhere because it takes that, that acknowledgement of him being... To go scripture, the, propipi- the propitiation yeah, of our sins, yeah. right? Like, he doesn't get to fulfill that role if we don't acknowledge him stepping into that role. Right. So you can do all the good in the world, but if you didn't acknowledge that Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice to die for you, then those works are going to do nothing. They're okay. going to burn mm. up. So. All right. Mm. Jason? Hmm. Do, you, do, you have, do you have any, or maybe you don't have a position, or maybe you're here to get a position. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I have a position. To, um, I heard one guy say this not too long ago, he, you know, between grace and works and faith and works. Um, he said, like, I have faith that this, that I'm going to get on, I'm going to, that this plane that I'm about to get on will take me to where I need to go. Okay. Um, uh, but my work and my effort is to get onto the plane. All right. Um, and that's, that's how that's I a good see point. it. Okay. Um, but to have a definitive answer, I don't, um, because I always go to, uh, the thief on the cross, you know, that's, that's my biggest one. That theology. And then, then you, then you start to walk into this territory of once saved, always saved, or Mm -hmm. is it once you backslide, when you backslide and you die tomorrow, it's sorry, buddy. So it's a, it's a, for me, it's. You, you, you're you towing the line in two different areas when it comes to grace versus works. Uh, I think, you know, but that just, so I don't have a, a, a definite answer. Right, yeah. I just have I just opinions. wanted to see where your position yeah, yeah, yeah. was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You um, know, there's a there's a large. I'm not going to say my position until the end. Oh, my god. Because I'm going to read some scriptures. You're so dramatic. And <laughs> ask, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let you defend your position. Okay. 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 Did you have something else? No. I was just going to say to Jason's Go. point, there's a lot of people who, who believe those who claim Christian to be a Christian and then walk away and truly like turn and actions, behavior, everything, like turn their back on the church, uh, that those people never truly had an interaction You're talking about with Christ. Not even maybe to get those to that people? point, but to, to Jason's point, you know, what he's talking about with people losing their salvation. I guess it's, oh, okay. it's that crowd specifically. Gotcha. There's a lot of believers who would say, if they got to that point, then they never met Jesus. They never were in fellowship or communion with him to begin with. A false convert. Right, right. It's either the emotion of the moment or, um, you know, following and joining the church for the, the cult of the Christianity, yeah. not so much the daily act of submitting. This and that's seems what we'll like the right about. thing to do. Right, right. Like I think even Joe Rogan said it best, you know, or not best, Ooh. but in this regard, he said, man, I, after reading the Bible and hearing about all these things, I have to like, I have to admit, even if I wasn't a Christian and called Christ my Savior, if I were to just follow these rules, I would have a very good, successful, happy life. <laughs> okay, yeah. So that would be the works without the grace. Right. 
Yeah, it's effective, I, yeah, and you can a have lot a of good people life. Say that. Yeah, and, yeah, absolutely. But, but it's the it's the the act of submission within our free will that we're granted that that allows the power of grace to flood us. So. Wow. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go um, to Matthew 19:16, Uh-oh. and we're going to talk about the uh, the rich young man. He's so rich and young. Okay. Now this, and now what I'm going to talk, and we're going to do two different, um, two different pieces of of evidence here. One we have Jesus himself and quotes that he made, and then we have stuff that Paul wrote. And I want to I want to dissect. You know where where do we split that, or how do we take a letter that Paul wrote to a church and take that and go? You know what Jesus actually meant this. Mm. Let's let's talk about that, okay? Uh, the rich young man, in in Matthew nineteen sixteen, it said, "Now someone came up to him and said, Teacher, what good thing must I do to gain eternal life?'" That's kind of like the question we put on the table today, right? Mm-hmm. He and Jesus said to him, "Why do you?" Why do you ask me about what is good? In some translations, why do you call me good? There's nobody good but God. Mm. There's only one good. Mm. There's only one king, it's not a, King Charles. I like how Jesus Chuck. even 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 Jesus was like the Son of God, the Creator. Was like, why are you calling me good? Mm-hmm. There's there's no one good, but God. That's pretty profound, anyway. Especially in a polytheistic right. society. Where they would right, they, yeah, they canonize or worship whoever they felt had access to a God that they didn't. Jesus said, uh, but if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He's talking about the Ten Commandments, mm-hmm. which is God's moral law. And the man said, which ones? And Jesus replied, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, honor your father and your mother, Love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man said, I've done all that. I've obeyed all these laws. D- is there something I still lack? Am I missing something? And Jesus said, if you wish to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful because he was really rich. So rich. And then Jesus turned to his disciples after the man left. He said, I'll tell you the truth. It's going to be hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle, in which we talked about that before on the show. Which is interesting. The eye of the needle is not a a needle that you put thread Mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. It was actually a thing that they had to put their camels through Mm -hmm. at that time in in Jerusalem. Or maybe they had them all over the place. He said it will be easier. Um, Oh, Sorry. I lost my, uh, it'll be easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were greatly astonished when they heard this. Who can be saved? Oh, what? Ooh, what? What are you talking about? We're all rich. What are you saying? Uh, Jesus looked at him and said, it is impossible for mere humans, but for all, for, but for God, all things are possible. Then Peter asked him, look, we, we've left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? And Jesus said, I tell the, I'll tell you the truth. In the age when things are renewed, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, Mm. you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Yeah. Wow. Yes, sir. (laughs) Wow. Okay, so there's a couple of things to unpack here. Okay. And tell me if... And and tell me if we have if, if we're dealing with context here, Jacob, mm-hmm. because according to this, I have to do works to enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, I mean within this scenario. What? But so. No, go ahead. What? No, I'm just. I'm. That's that's where I'm from. Like Jesus said, "Hey, do these things," or or was he or was he messing with this guy? Mm, let me. Let, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me give me a second. Well, here's second. what I will say. Jesus, when he spoke to whoever he was speaking to, it was somewhat always cryptic. Like there was always a meaning underlining uh, the meaning. Tr- true. Right. Um, there are very few times where he spoke plainly. Right. When um, when he was speaking to the woman at the well, and she said, "Well, when was my? When do we know?" And he goes, "I I am he." Right. Yeah. A lot of people will say, "Oh no, he didn't like." 
ex- like directly say that he's the Messiah. Well, what he did though, right? So there's yeah, a lot absolutely. of there's a lot of when he speaks, it's it, you have to take. I don't I I don't know. And be okay with hey, I don't know, right? I don't know. Yeah. Um, but as far as like, I I would assume for me, reading that verse and being taught from that verse, um, over the years, it's more about the heart position in that. It's rather than than the, what you're extrapolating from the the work or the action of, right? So it's more of the posture of their heart and uh, the posture of 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 them mentally and where they are in relation to Christ, in relation to God, in relation to where they are with their spiritual walk, versus you know the the action of yeah. right. But then a lot of people say, well, if where their heart where their actions are, that's, you know, the tree that bears, bears good fruit, you'll know a tree by its fruit, right? Yeah. A lot of people will actually quote that too and be like, well, we know a tree when we see one, but, but no one really does because no one knows the heart of man. Other than right. God. You'll know them by their fruit, but we won't. But right. Then, and then, and then but, it always goes back to the thief on the cross. Where right. was his fruit? Exactly. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Where's it? And then I also, then I heard uh, recently at this, at this past week, heard this, uh, this pastor um, online said, "He's this is what he said. If the if the free the if the chief the f- chief if the thief got off the cross, uh-huh. then um, he would have done X Y and Z, and he would have walked as a Christian." And I said, and I was listening to him say that, and I said, "That's really? presumptuous of you. That's presumptuous of you to to assume what he would and would have not done when he if he had gotten off that cross. How For, could you say that? Yeah." You can't. That's very presumptuous, and um, and it kind of bothered me because I'm like, dude, how can you say that? But anyway, well, that's I, my no. That's a good point because if uh, because at his last words were like, hey, remember me, right? When you pass into your kingdom, right? Acknowledging Jesus what? as a savior, right? <laughs> right. It was like right then, right? And if Jesus would like, you know what? I'm going to get you off the cross. I mean, and then I mean that doesn't even make sense. Why? How, why would you? Yeah, hypotheticals can be unhealthy at <laughs> right. that point because right. you're trying to connect. And I think that's what anytime, man, that might be kind of heavy to say, but anytime throughout history, men has tried to operate in a hypothetical to fill in the blank on characteristics and nature of God or to complete his stories that were beyond the ordained canon. Like it stopped here. You don't get to add your yeah. presumptive thoughts to the back end. Um, I think anytime men's done that throughout history, it's proved dangerous because it's it's the only time the Bible can potentially be proved infallible is if man is operating, adding to outside of deleting and unctioning of the Holy Spirit. Right. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, no, I mean I agree. That's that's a hard case to make unless it was like a, a constructive illustration or contextual illustration, but to make that bold statement of it's that uh, yeah, because I, know, I know what he's referring to. I, he's referring back I in, get, all through the New Testament. Anytime Jesus heals someone, it's not about healing, it's about their heart and then them repenting, him forgetting the sin. Through the act of repenting, turning their life around, forgiving the sin, the healing takes place through in their body because but yeah. so I get what he's referring back to most which is what I said initially. Once you have a true interaction with God, you don't you don't fall away. Like how could you? So what, what do you mean? Yeah, I don't know. Like what you said with like deconstructionist or people who lose mm. their salvation. Oh, okay. there's a that, lot of people that who, denounce Jesus, right? There's a right, lot of right. people who believe if you get to the point where you're yeah. denouncing Jesus, then yeah. you never truly knew him in the right. first place. So he's building along that same premise of basically probably believing the same thing. Mm. Once you've met the true Jesus, you don't, you don't turn away from it unless, right. unless you're turned your back from day one. Mm. He never had your heart to begin with, mm. but yeah. No, I mean that's that, a good point because the elect endure to the end, and not getting into full blown <laughs> Calvinism, right? But like that's it's true. Not pre, pre but that's true. 100%. Because somebody, will, how how will you know? He said, because I'll make it to the end. And that doesn't mean that's perfection all, through the end. I'll make it to the end. Yeah, and that never well, that means perfection. Basically, it means I'm following him to the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like Old Testament, New Testament, the the. The laws you followed in the Old Testament show what God you served. So by following the laws, it helped to define sin pre-Jesus' return. And then post, it came the grace of God through him dying on the cross, the supernatural act that gave the law its power. So Old Testament, they followed the law. By what laws you followed, people could tell what God you served. Like they had Hammurabi's Code in Babylon, different sets of laws for Egyptians. 
So whichever set of laws your culture and people followed and submitted to, anyone outside looking in could see, oh, they follow this God because this is what they do. Sure. Right? Like, so that's what they did. So in a way, not in a way, but that's what it did. It defined sin. God was <coughs> defining sin in the Old Testament by saying, these things I stand for, these things I do not. If they operate within this and you follow it, then you're good. If it's out here, then you're sinning. And then obviously they started with the same, like the scapegoat, right? Like yeah. doing, <coughs> doing sacrifices. And that wasn't just a Christian thing where sacrifice, where they knew the scapegoat. Somebody would take the fall for everybody. So that, that was already in play in the Old Testament. And then you had the promise through the Old Testament of a Savior coming, the King coming, the Messiah coming, never explicitly stating because that he would die. I mean, the hints are all there, right? Like it validates in the yeah. New Testament, but they yeah. weren't explicitly telling people, here's what it looks like, here's what he's going to do, here's the plan. Yeah. It was, it was the construct and element of faith, of believing. We follow these laws. We know someone's coming on the other side. Like we know the end is here. So... I think then you look at the New Testament with him coming back. That's the act of, and if you look at verse 26 up here, Jesus looked at them and replied, this is impossible for mere humans, but for God, all things are possible. It takes yeah. the supernatural element of Jesus's death, burial, resurrection, and then acknowledging that to achieve and obtain that eternal life. And then the laws and everything you follow beyond that, do not murder, do not commit, do not steal, do not give false that validates which God you So serve. is that considered the works? Like the well, the, 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 the um the Ten Commandments? Would you consider that that the works? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of um direct um things that in the epistles that Paul writes about that do or do not do, right? Like um you know like don't name you can name any, right? Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> So where does let's define works? What is works? Well, let me let me before we do that, I want to I want to add on to what you were saying about the law. Yeah. The the law also showed them that there was no way they could measure up to a holy God. Yeah, it it showed there's, how imperfect there's they were. no way I can do any of this. So uh, works, mm-hmm. um, basically, from what I from what I've understood, uh, Rome. <laughs> has distorted the gospel because they are all about the works because <clears throat> you cannot be sanctified or justified enough right. to get into his presence. So like, for instance, if a, if a Catholic goes to mass on Sunday by Wednesday, right. you need that. they're messed up already. You need back. Or if if they can have enough prayers to the saints, because the the saints have I forgot the word they call it, but it's almost uh, they borrow their sanctification from the saints or their justification right. from the saints because they're closer to God than they were. Sure. Um, they can get into purgatory mm. until they are purified enough to get into the presence. Sure, which goes against the gospel. Okay, so uh, my question is, is it grace plus works equals salvation? No. No, No, because then the guy on the cross wouldn't make yeah. it because he would have no works there, to stack there's, up. Yeah, there's nothing from what I understand. In, in the, the biggest book that I can go to is Romans. I was about, that's literally what I just pulled up. Romans, Roman will, Romans will just put it all out there for you. There's nothing that I can do to earn eternal life. Which is why I'm bringing this scripture up when Jesus talked to the young, the rich young ruler. Um, it, it, either he was he either he was this this has to be a contextual thing. Right he was here. using a matter of the heart to the person he I, was talking to, and then symbolically referring or, it back. Or he knew that this man did keep all these laws, and he one upped him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He knew his heart. Yeah, he's speaking specifically to like, his audience. I know this guy heart. has not done any of these things, but here's one thing he won't do. Yeah, I got no answer to it. He can't. <laughs> he has no answer. I truly believe, and that's the, and I think that's the the beauty in the parables and some of those interactions is because maybe your heart's not on money, so this one may not hit you the same, right? Maybe right. you're like that one doesn't. There's going to be a parable, a story, a reference. There's somebody Jesus spoke to in the New Testament that hit them different. That yeah, yeah. that's going to refer to you, or it's going to be. Man, that hits home to me. Like, that's real. Man, I've had that thought before. I think that's the, the 
the really cool but also powerful aspect and part of the New Testament is his ability to do that. Like there's there's not a single person who could who could go through that and hear those stories and be like, yeah, but I didn't I didn't resonate with any of those. There's not one that appealed to me. There's not one that sounded like me because he's speaking directly to human heart matters. There's sure. going to be something that appeals to you. And then to Byron's point, if you go into like Romans six, yeah. Romans four, five, six, like just start in the Romans Roman roads. Six. Like it's, it's the headline is the new life in Christ. What should we say then? Should we continue in sin so that grace may multiply? May never be. Because grace is only powerful where there's sin because that's where grace's power comes in. So, he, so the people are like, okay, cool. If we're going to heaven regardless and grace covers our sin, that's like a credit card. We can just do what we need to do. And Paul's like, time out, wait. So this is when he starts to get into the balance of Old Testament, New Testament, Old Covenant, New, then works versus faith, and then what pro, what role that plays. And let me let me yeah, go tag onto that right there, what you're saying, because they didn't understand, is because when Paul's using that word sin, it's not an action word, it's a noun. He's talking about your sin nature. He's not talking about your behavior modification. Right. He's, he's saying one man brought sin into the world, so it makes sense that only one man could then pull sin out of the world. Mm-hmm referring back right. to Jesus and the role he played in that. And then they're like, okay, so if he, if he died for all our sin, then we can go ahead and do whatever we want. Like it's free for all, like, because he's there and we have that. So and he's y'all missing the point, right? He's like, <laughs> come, he said, so should we continue in sin so that grace may multiply? Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Or are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in the newness of life. For if we've been united with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So then he goes through to, to lay out exactly what that means. And then he balances those, the argument of the grace versus works. But you'll see Paul, Jesus, and a lot of the other uh, disciples in the New Testament add a different a different layer, a different caveat, if you will, to the grace first works debate. And that's that you get rewards in heaven for your faithfulness on earth now. Like there, there are rewards in heaven waiting. Like if we all go up there, (coughs) we all might not have the same rewards when we get up to heaven. When you get in front of the judgment seat, you know, anything you do outside of his leading is going to burn up. I did a lot of nice things. I did. I gave to the poor every day. Yeah, but I didn't lead you to, I needed you to do this with that. And you didn't, you, you tried to do works, do good on your own. They're going to burn. Yeah. Up. yeah. Okay. But let anytime you're let, obedient, that it goes away from a work. It's, it's no longer a work. It's an act of obedience. And then when you tie an act right. of obedience to it, it ties a reward to it in heaven. This, this, I think this will help you out, oh, too, wait, wait, when you were on. asking this question. I, 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 I'm set in my opinion, yeah. right? But I just want to, for the sake of the audience, counter what you guys are saying. Right. Uh, if you go to First John, uh, sec, uh, First John 2, uh, 2, 3, we know that we have to come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if we, if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. So from when I, when I read that, right, for the people that with the yeah. works, they say, yeah, they, yeah, works. Yeah, works. I got to do something. I, I, I got to get to work. <laughs> you want a Maserati? You better work. Listen, the best, the best thing that I can wrap my head around is I am saved and sanctified and justified by grace. Nothing of my works have done that. And because of that, I do the works because I'm grateful. Out of a heart of grad, I'm doing the works because I'm grateful for what he did to me. Guess what I'm not going to do? All the other stuff that an old man did. Okay, but let's say, but <laughs> whoever says I know him, would you say I, you know him? Yes. Okay. And let's just say you didn't do what he commands. You're a liar. Yeah. And the truth is not in you. You do not know him. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, you know, he says. Ma- yeah, Matthew 7, 21. Right. I was about to read that one. So with that being said, a lot of people that are on the work side claim that, hey, you know, no, it actually is grace plus works, you know, because we're not out here doing what we want to do. I think we're going to, you know. 
Yeah, I think scripture answers itself in that exact same scripture. It says that they never knew him. The truth was never in them. That to me sounds like they never truly, they never met Jesus, sacrificed, died to self, and truly submitted to follow him. They read the Bible. They saw the stuff they can do, and then they've tried to do what they read in the Bible without, with discounting or overstepping or disregarding the personal relationship with our Father. And I think that'd be the missing part to that. And I think scripture answers that in the same thing, the way it says it was saying that they, they never knew him. The truth was not in them. That to me says they've never had a heart conversion. They've never truly died to self and said, all right, <clears throat> Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And the best way I believe you died on the cross that I can do is to take my cross up daily. And that means I'm going to die on my cross. I'm going to die to myself. That doesn't mean perfection from that point forward, but it means you're going to acknowledge when you miss it. It means you're going to work to produce fruit. But it doesn't mean you do the works to do pr- to produce fruit outside of the relationship with Christ. If that makes yeah, sense, yeah, I'm not trying to talk out of both sides. No, of my you don't mouth, do the so. works to get what you just said. I got right. You you, <laughs> you already got that. Already, already you already got that. It, so why do you have to work towards it? And I think I think to the it's, point it's of, from a place of victory. To use like Christianese, right? They yeah. always say to live life from a place of victory. You've I already stand Christianese. You've already got this. Yeah, you, know, I, you have same a new, here because it doesn't. You have a new. You have anything. a new nature. Yeah, I, for Comple- me personally, completely. I, I believe when I when I prayed, confessed my sin, and I asked Christ into my heart, I became a creation that was not existing a moment ago. Right. I got an influx. I got a blood transfusion of the only pure blood left Your on this earth. was recreated. And was recreated with the Holy <clears throat> Spirit inside of me. I had a, a literal death and resurrection inside of me in a moment, right? Like my spirit yeah. man died and made a choice to be reborn, but that spirit man still is going to be fighting my, right. yeah. my every guess, other part guess, of my body. Guess what to, did, yeah, guess what didn't change? Yeah, my flesh. I didn't, right. I didn't physically die. Well, you know why? Is because when you had a sin nature... When you have a sin nature, you're born into it. Um, you're programmed, this body and this mind is programmed by that sin nature. So it's like a computer program. You're just doing what it's programmed. Yeah, you don't, once you don't you're become created, a sinner when you create your Once you're sin. recreated that spirit, now you have to renew your mind by reading the word of God, which is the daily to find out who you are. That's how you pick up your cross daily. Right. It's, That's, and then, so y- yeah, you're right. You're fighting this other guy, this, the, the unrenewed mind and this flesh that's been programmed to all this stuff. Now you got this new guy inside. If you renew your mind and, and if you renew your mind, you've got spirit and mind versus body. You got two against one. Mm-hmm. If you don't, you've got two unregenerative flesh and mind against a new spirit. Usually those two are going to win out. They flame out. You get burned out. Being a Christian's hard. Yeah. That's those conversations. And then that's where we're talking about. We're like, well, there, he didn't, he's not doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Where's the, where's the works? Where's the works? So, well, you made a choice when you realized what the cost was, that it was too much. Sometimes, sometimes, Sometimes they don't get in a community that helps them. It's like yeah, we'll you know com- what I'm saying. I'll if you're out there on an island by yourself trying to do this on your own, you you can't do it. That's why you do need to to renew your mind with the Word and Jesus every day. Yeah. That's the like like Jesus said. This it's impossible for humans. Yeah. With God, all things is possible. With with Him on my side and Him helping me through this, I can defeat this dude. If that statement wasn't in the the rich man parable just that one line that men could not do it on its own, then I would be all in on the work side, right? Because that the works, if, if men could do it on its own, then that means the law he provided us is perfect to obtain the end goal. But yeah. he already pointed out and said, these laws are not enough. And then adds that scripture in there that men couldn't do it on their own, that they needed God. That to me is kind of the final nail in the coffin of a works debate specifically and only because none of our works, your works aren't ordained and of him unless he's inside of you commanding you. Otherwise, you're you're seeing, oh, I see what they did and it worked for them. I'm going to do that too. But again, it discounts that personal relationship. I can't just see Byron be successful and be like, all right, I'm going to pattern my life after Byron. I might be successful on this world, right? Because that's why you have mentors, duh. Like you, you pattern your life, you see what worked for them. But I couldn't have the expectation of salvation at the end of my life 
that Byron would have because I'm just outside looking in. I don't know what he's been willing to sacrifice, what it's cost him to obtain salvation. What's your assurance of your salvation? My faith. What's your faith? My faith is that Jesus Christ died on the cross for, for your my sins. For your sins. Mm-hmm. That's all you need, right? Well, yeah, he yeah paid, for salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right, and he paid the debt. But then it's a it's a heart, right? You can say it without meaning it, sure. and I think that's the extension of it. Like, so I think there's. A I big think that where's where's where you getting into the elect, right? If you're a Calvinist, right? <laughs> I'm a Calvinist. So you believe people are pre predetermined, predestined for life? Who's going to be a Christian? And, and I'm not questioning or challenging you. I I'm think just like that's. I, it I think sounds I, it's very. It's, a, it's an interesting, interesting. debate. Like I think 100%. it's a. I think I'm more aligned of a Calvinist than I am not. Okay. Yeah. And I get it. I mean. Yeah. When yeah. I hear them speak, I'm like. Mm. Kind of resonates. Yeah, because yeah. there's a lot I agree Even, with, like on the Calvinist side. It's just that that one catch of the, the predestination and predetermination. I still believe. I, I truly believe in my heart of hearts that everybody has an opportunity to be in a relationship with God. Because when I, when you think of, but they didn't. But here's the deal. <laughs> but here, <laughs> no. But here's here's they do have that chance. Here's the deal. Didn't. We're thinking of God in in the in the confines of time and space. Wow. Yeah. When you that's think, very hard to do. Yeah, yeah. so that's because we think of it, it linear, right? But when we think out, well, now we can't think. But if we try to imagine that he's outside of time and space, it it doesn't doesn't matter if if it's if Jacob got saved two minutes ago or two years ago. Doesn't matter if it's in, if he's on the outside if he's outside of time and space. Doesn't matter mm-hmm. if it was two minutes ago or two years ago. It doesn't. Was it predestined? Yeah, because you know why? He was at the beginning, and also he was at the end. His book's been written already. But that, that's, that's why. That's true. That's why I lean towards more of that because I don't want to. I don't want to think of time as something as this. There's a point right here and an end point right there, because e- e- even if we didn't have the sun, the rotation of the Earth, the time still exists because he 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 ordained it. Yeah. Right. But what does that look like? I don't know because I'm not God. You know. Um, so that's why I lean towards more of yeah, sure. I believe in predestination. I believe things that have happened. Well, he knows they were supposed to happen before they even happened. Right. Well, I mean, I can't understand it. You. Yeah, that's where you'd have to land if you think God is, you know, all knowing, all omnipotent. Yeah. So I think there's where two what, different, I mean two different ways to look at that. So I believe just like parenting, um, you raise your children. In the right and the words and will not depart from it. That doesn't mean they're going to be perfect the whole time. Like my mom prayed that over me all the time growing up. I still fell off on drugs. Still, I went to jail. Was facing you know fifteen years. Like so. To back to your point, does that mean? And this is an honest question. Was I not saved? This is the part where I come yeah. to it though. Like was I not saved during those years I fell apart? Like fell off, or did my salvation stick from? childhood right. yeah that that goes right, right where we're talking about right now right. exactly that's worse but then you but then you look at the old testament and so for god to this is how in my opinion free will still comes into play even within that argument because god told david here's what's going to happen like if you if you stay here saul's coming they're going to kill you dead today and so david had the option and he left so what yeah. god told him was going to come to pass no longer came to pass because david used his free will See what I'm saying here? So that's kind of the outside of that argument. Like, yes, God controls, God knows the future and can see the probabilities and playouts and all that, but it still takes an act of faith on the human side or an action on the human side to allow what God sees to to take place. Obviously, 700 scenarios in every interaction, and he can see it all. (laughs) But what I'm saying is our free will within that moment still impacts what happens next. Right, like if God well, still wanted doesn't Solomon, he know that free will? God, if God wanted Solomon to still kill or Saul to kill him, still, then even if he told him, that would still come to pass. Like, hey, Saul's still going to get you, but he had free will in the moment, and he used the information God gave him to what if you want to say like uh, change the future, <laughs> right? Like, so that's that's the catch to it, and I think that's the ah, cool part of a, a supernatural relationship, right? Right? No, it's crazy. It's crazy. But I true. I mean, back to that thing. Well, you know, let's go back to your question: Were you saved? So, what what age are we talk? Let's just walk through this. So this, raised, this is a great this is a great study for this topic. Well, I was raised in church. I started doing drugs, like smoking weed and stuff, probably like 15, 16. Okay, fifteen, sixteen. So, did you think uh, was there a turning point 
where you believed? Did you get a brand new spirit? Oh yeah. No, honestly, that's, I, 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 I would lean on the side of saying I was still safe through that. If I would have died, I would still have gone to heaven. I was, yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out because, and, and that goes to the scripture of if, uh, you know, train up a child, they will go and they will not depart. Yeah. Story. That's may not absolutely be written, it. Because if you were born again, truly, that means I was raised on it and you did all these other things. That means basically you were fighting against your flesh that was programmed that way. 100% Byron. I so if you went it. that way, it doesn't matter all of those works. So people go, Oh, you can, uh, what, what, what did we say about the fruit, the fruit of the tree? What? You'll know them by their fruit. You'll know them by their fruit. That doesn't necessarily mean yeah. we knew Jacob by his fruit, but he was fighting his flesh, but he still came back because he had a, Which a gets new to spirit the part of just not giving up. And at some point, your spirit was still there, and he's like, you know what? I'm I'm alive in God. We need to shut this man, this flesh down, mm-hmm. oh, and, and make a change. And then looking back through like my story with that, so the, all those works had nothing to do with your salvation. No, nope. it was did. a heart. It was a heart thing. That that's my in my mind. That's it's a heart. It was a heart issue. Now I think my my works towards post and coming back allows the opportunity to help grow the kingdom. And that's where the rewards come in because obedience in God isn't for you. It's for someone else. So those opportunities and instances where you're obedient and have a chance to store up riches, the whole impact and the power of that obedience is that it unlocks the potential to spread the gospel. So, so if I would have died at that point, my works may have been limited. I may not be, you know, up there popping out in a mansion (laughs) like you guys, but I'd make it. Right. Yeah. And so I, I think that's where I fall on it. Um, yeah, it's a good point. And I don't know if everyone could have the same upbringing and some people may get saved later in life. And that's the part with Jason on, on his side with that, you know, obviously with there being no timeline, God's li- not like, Hey, I predetermined that you would be saved at age 67 because <laughs> he's yeah. not picking on a linear timeline. Yeah. He's just saying, Hey, my, my life, my, my spirit is present in your life. You'll find it. Right. Yeah. I mean, am I understanding kind of, yeah. That's what I think. I mean, is anybody going to be shocked if you, if, you know, we get to heaven and we see Hitler? I think there's going to be people in heaven. We'll be surprised to see him there. <laughs> see what I'm, I'm not saying Hitler, but I think there's well, going to be people. Well, I'm just saying. Everybody hey, if, if Hitler confessed right Christ end, as Lord. You know what I'm saying? The thief on the cross. You can't. Like, you can't. Gunna, who led him to the <laughs> Lord? Like We thought. <laughs> like, I thought we had this one, man. But I truly, I truly do believe there's going to be people up there that we're going to be surprised. But it goes back to my and comment then we're about be, you. And then you we don't, don't care. Exactly, because we're up there. So it takes away the competition. <laughs> but you, yeah. don't, you don't know what another person has gone through in their life or what they've been called to sacrifice or what they're fighting to right. get where they are. Yeah. Jason? Yeah, no, I... Um, Pastor Jason. No, 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 no. Scholar? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm just a man. <laughs> Did you know they I'm had a... Don't you put that juju on me, Ricky Bobby. Um, <laughs> uh, Caesar used to have well, a gentleman that quick. would sit behind him and S- whisper in his ear. Yeah, he would. You're just a man. You're just a man. Yeah, he didn't he tell him to do that? Yeah. Because well, he, he wanted to make sure his ego was in mm-hmm. check. Uh, so I have to remind myself, I'm just a man. Uh, also, here's what I think. I, I, That's good. I think we... <sighs> What's going on over here? Here is what I think. Okay. Um, I think we can all, and I'm try to be as polite as I can. Uh, I think we're all well, kind of full of shit all always the time, right? <laughs> so here's what I mean. Like, and you get on to me I for saying faggot. <laughs> that's true. But we have a pastor on right now. <laughs> um, I'm human. Yeah. I I'm say only shit. Okay. human. So I don't okay. know, man. I I don't want. What's your point? My point is this. I don't want to presume to think that I know the beautiful synergy that happens between mm. grace <clears throat> and your free will, right? I can understand. Grace that. and free will. And okay. so when we try to understand these things and try to understand these lovely, secret, beautiful, majestic things, it's it, it we can't because we're only human, Right. And so I always turn to, uh, it was, I don't know if you guys know this pastor. Um, his name's Alistair Begg. 
You guys ever heard of him? Alistair, Alistair. Bag. Alistair Bag. He's Bag. Uh, Scottish. Okay. He's older, right? He's, I think yeah, you yeah. have turned yeah. me on to him. Yeah. Uh, Scottish? Yeah, Scottish. Um, Scottish? He. Jesus was on the cross? Yeah, so there's a. Uh, uh, he, he said this in one of his sermons, and I really. Uh, stuck, okay. stuck with me. Uh, but it gets as, as a verse from Deuteronomy. It's Deuteronomy 29, 29. Uh, Let the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and our children forever, that they may follow all the world's words of this law. But the first part where it says, the secret things, let the secret things belong to the Lord our God. There's a lot of things that we don't know. We won't know how salvation takes place in somebody's heart. <clears throat> we won't True. know. We True. can't. I can't look at Jacob and say, hey, you guys could look at me in the last six months, seven months, and say, hey, I, don't, I, don't, I, well, question, I, I question if he was dude, ever saved. That dude. Right? And there are people that, there's people that still see that, say that. Yeah. Right? They don't know me. Why is he? They don't look in, why is into he the depths. Church? They don't look into the depths of my soul. They right. don't know they, me. Yeah, they can. I'm like David Goggins. You don't but, know me, son. <laughs> They don't know that, and so and that's right because be, people have people have a fallacy of of looking at works, yeah, and, and so, thinking that's what it's that's the fruit. But on the on and the, but you right they don't know. Yeah, but on the uh, but how could we right? So, um, but on the flip side, you know, if I I look at let's just use Hitler. Okay, let's yeah, we would tend to say, man that that man wasn't saved, right? He killed a lot of a lot of people, right? Right, he did a lot of murdering. Uh, you can make some people can make a judgment call and say, "Hey, that's 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 an accurate statement." Uh, I don't know. I don't know what happens. I'm I'm not the judge. I'm not the judge or the jury or the executioner. I want to be the executioner, <laughs> though. That's, that's what I always part. go to. I'm not that. When people ask, "Do you think he's saved?" Well, I don't know. I'm not the judge. Do yeah. you believe God to be just? Because yes. that's when the justice, like, right? That's when he, it's all going to play out. He has to be. So. He's the only one that so can be. You, you can't. I mean, to Jason's point, you have to believe that. I mean, truly. Otherwise, it's it's you control your thought on other people and what you feel like is just. Yeah. But that takes knowing right. parts of their life that you don't know. So a lot of yes, that, and that's kind of like the, my biggest thing with Christian, especially the American church, is that we tend to do that. We look at somebody's life and lives, and we say, "Hey, what, we uh, we don't want to judge you, but yet we're judging you in our hearts, right?" And then we judge you with. All these, all these, all these different ways, right? Yeah. Um, so I mean, it, I, like I said, I, I I don't know. I don't pretend to know. I don't presume to know. But I know. Here's the what I do know. What do you know? That he's good. That he's just. Mm -hmm. And I don't rely on what I know. I would not rely on that the character of him, and that's his character. So if I can if I can trust that he's good, and that he's just, then. All the other stuff is is uh, fluff, fluffers. Well, let's go back. What's so, okay? Let's let's try to land the plane. Since, yeah, wow, that went by fast. Yeah, so yeah, since, I didn't realize the time we flew. Since we quickly. since we talked about Jesus talking about in in Matthew seven, he also said, "Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven." Many will say in that day, "Lord, Lord, we have we not prophesied your name? We we cast demons out." We did many wonders in your name, and then I would declare to them, I never knew you department apart depart from me, you, you, will, you who practice yeah. lawlessness. Yeah, and um, that's a, that's another scripture people will go, well, see, there's the works. Yeah. Without the relationship. He's, yeah. he's saying the works aren't enough. You'll do the works. He's saying. But if you didn't know the Father personally. He who does the will of my Father. That's the works. Shall enter. Mm. Shall enter. Um, what is the will of his of the Father? Is accepting and following the yeah, Son. Yeah, what is the will? What does the Son say? He says, love all the other commandments can be summed up. Love one another as I have loved you. Yeah, how how did he, he love us? Uh, he put his life down for us. Okay, let's, let's, now let's, let's break down what does love mean? Sacrifice. Mm. Well, what does that look like in a practical day? We can go to we can go to Corinthians, right, and yeah. say, "Hey, you know, these are the, these are the things." But if you're not, or, sacrificing, yeah, yeah, you can get, yeah, you can go to the Word, or or what do you you know what does that look like on your yeah. daily yeah. daily walk? 
These are questions. Good questions. <laughs> Sacrifice who you are to be who he is. Um, so that's what it, and that that's that work thing, is it? Is that? Well, I mean, yeah, we have I to think, work every day. I've yeah, I've never discounting the works. I'm just saying the works alone won't get you into yeah. heaven. Mm. Who, do you, who are you trying to replicate or mirror or image if you don't know who you're trying to do? Then you're just trying to do the works. To I try think to the do works the are a byproduct. Well, what does he say? If you do the, the will of the Father, the ones that do the will of the Father will enter. Because the will of the Father is to follow His Son and submit to Him, and then the works follow the submission beyond. There's not a shortcut to yeah, it. Yeah, the will of the Father is to follow. Yeah, because the in son. the next sentence, he's like, many people are going to say, "I did this. I did that." Exactly. I, that's all works. And yeah. like, the I, don't will know, I don't know you. The will of the Father you is to submit will. and follow the Son, which is why the Son says, if you know me, you know the Father. Mm. If you know me, you know the Father. You, didn't, you did all this stuff, but you didn't do the will. Yeah. You, you, did, you tried to do what? it. What? You tried to follow a recipe or a formula, and you left something but out. But you, so you didn't know the will, yo. Uh, Paul says, um, <laughs> this is how you get saved. Um, believe in your heart. Confess, Confess with your, your mouth. mouth. Believe in your heart. And there, brother, you are saved. Right? Yeah. That's what he said. That's what he says. And um when like you said the formula. I think we do that a lot of times in the in, in the in the American church is we do these formulas, this A, B, and C. We give like, like, Yeah, we do that and then intellectual assent to a full uh, to a, a full pass a few passages in the Bible where we say, Uh huh. Do you believe in the resurrection? Uh huh. Do you believe in the bet there? Yeah, uh huh. Show my oh hands. brother, you are saved. Now let's get you some Bibles and get you some springs on your wagons and let's get you out the door. Right, and let's let you, yeah, I want to. Ser- I want you to start serving as a greeter. Oh, that's what I love about our church, though, because PT will say it up from the front. This prayer right now will not get you saved. Right. It won't. This prayer, it will not, but it's the start. It's the start. You can acknowledge his presence, but then what are you going to, again, sacrifice, die to self to pursue his presence? That's the part that could take 10 years, 10 days, 10 months. That's the part we don't know what other people are going through. But regardless, even if they're going through something heavy, we still don't know their heart within that process. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're tuggling. Maybe they're 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 trust like tuggling with something they know they need to be obedient about that they've been putting off because they've put it off. It's become harder to do because it's been harder to do. There's more baggage that now comes with it. So we only see the baggage they're dragging. But it all starts with one act of disobedience, which we've all been in a place where we've done the wrong thing when we should have done the right thing. So, I mean, I think that's to Jason's Jesus. point. We fall in and we see the baggage. We see the baggage, but we don't we don't know the cost for any of that. Yeah. We don't know the cost because we don't know anyone's individual. That's what life, you're talking you about. They in. see the baggage. Yeah. Yeah. I see Jason's baggage. I got a lot of baggage. Bro, um, we all do, man. What about this? 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Did you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. The sexually immoral, idolaters, adulterers, passive homosexual partners, practicing homosexuals. Oh, there's a different. Wait, what? What is this? What is this translation? We have a passive and a practicing homosexual. I guess. Are the frogs gay? Don't don't mistake patience for tolerance. (laughs) Don't mistake God's patience for tolerance. Thieves, the greedy, drunkards, and the verbal, verbal, abusive, the swindlers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you once lived this way, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Yeah. Yeah. But remember. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's a lot. Whether it's the whether it's are, right, are we gonna make it? <laughs> you will never be ever 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 be more righteous than you are the moment you invite him into your heart. That's it, right. It's not it's not a scale that's measured, weighed out, and paid by works. It's a position, and it's a birthright that you step into and get to that. What is Paul talking about then? Yeah, using? why was he talking to the Corinthians about this? Obviously, something was going on. Well, they, they was in that church. Current, well, they th- that whole place. They was was he speaking? With was sexual he speaking immorality. to these people that were not born again? Yeah, were they? It, I, that no, this had, is the that, church. This is the that church. That has to be. It's the letters to the. Hey church. guys, listen. You, you guys aren't going to inherit the kingdom of God. This whole this whole scripture is is wild. It does kind of. Throw everything <laughs> a, a muck for us after we're I think, he's, talking. I think he's questioning. He's questioning where their heart is for people to claim it and not live it and yeah. not even show any fruit. I think it goes. He back says to some the of you once lived this way. Some of you were gay, <laughs> right? That's what he said. 
But you were washed. A lot of military. You were sanctified and justified by the spirit of our God. Some of you were gay, but you were washed. That's that's a t-shirt, brother. Right? I know, man. I right? I have thoughts. Could you see on, that? I have. Some of I, you were some of you were gay, but you've been washed. Washed. That is. I'm putting that on a t-shirt. I need leaders clean, <laughs> leaders clean streaks on a t-shirt. I still need a brown t-shirt. It says leaders clean streaks. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know what that means. I love the gays. I don't know. I don't, that, that kind of throws a wrench in our. Well, I mean, I mean, Paul obviously is talking to people that well, are Paul's doing some nasty stuff. Yeah. And he's talking about their, their unregenerative. Unre- is that a word? Help me, help me, now. Rachel. It is now. Uh, <laughs> Where at? What'd you do? What word did you say? Unregenerative. <laughs> Un- Genitive? Obviously, these people were not born again. Well, we don't know that. Well, he said some, of you, some of you once lived this way. I think yeah. they're, I think it's a church of believers. But you were washed. He's guiding and instructing okay, let's, on let's, how to well, be a believer. Some of you once lived this way, but you were washed. He's sanctified. reminding them, hey, remember, when you ask Christ into your heart, when you, when you tried maybe, this Jesus thing, when you gave it a, cry, a, ca- like maybe, a try, you were washed. Like you're, you're, maybe so he's helping you don't them have fight against that, old, that, that that's, flesh. That's what he's doing. That's he's what saying, he's like. All right, you took this step of faith and called Christ your Savior. That's it. But you're not living it. So here's what you need to do to now live a lifestyle Which has nothing that to follows do with salvation. the in your heart. Right. It's, but it says, and the swindlers will not inherit the kingdom. Right. Oh, God. And the sw- don't swindle. I people. hate the way you put swindlers. swindlers in here. I love swindlers. Is that is that swindlers. snake oil? That's salesman? hustlers. Yeah, that's hustlers. Yeah, yeah. hustlers. Yeah. Hey guys, come in, come to the back. I got something to show you. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. This this is. Uh, he's, he's drawing a definitive line. I think he is. Well, the first line Some is: you. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not? Remember, you're not going to. You'll never be more righteous than you are the moment you invite God right. in your heart. Which, so which is saying, completely yeah. with with Jesus's grace, because you can't do anything to get that righteousness, because Just, we're not. Yeah, he's calling it out. Basically, you could tell, like, the unrighteous will not inherit it. Don't be deceived. They're, this is what they practice, period. Some of you once lived this way, like, hey, see, like, this is what they practice. They won't get it. And some of you used to be this, like, understood. You just, you've, you've accepted Christ as your Lord now, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified. He's reminding them and talking them through how to live a fulfilling life as a Christian that draws other people to yeah. Christ. He's not contradicting or I think he's saying it's allow- time to stop providing being allowances, mm. right? And swindlers, stop swindling people. Swindler and skedaddle are and two s- funny words. Stop being a passive homosexual and a practicing one. Which, which to me means well, I'm kind of in there and not. Well, I mean, how to. I don't know, man. I, 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 don't. I have, th- I, like I said, I have thoughts on, on I have thoughts that I ought. I have not. thoughts on homosexuality and oh, the, the whole idea of being born with it or choice, or nurture versus nature. Well, we're all, we're all born that way. Some say that we we're, aren't, that it's a choice. No, dude, we were born with a sin nature. We're all, we all can be gay. Can you? <laughs> Yes, before I was you, born. Are you attracted? To I'm dudes? not. I'm not anymore because I got a new spirit. But are you? Were you attracted to dudes before? No. Have you ever been attracted to a dude? No. Do you think you could be? Um, probably. Are you attracted <laughs> to me right now? <laughs> you are swarthy. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's a that's, no. What that, anyway, I'm saying, that's, we're gonna off topic. <laughs> that's 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 what I mean. I it, it's no. Matter. I know what you mean, right. but when when people, I've tried to diffuse that argument because. Oh, were they born that way? Or is it a decision? I'm like, no, we were all born like that. Yeah, was I we're born all in... drunkards. We're all adulterers. We're all gay. Was I born an addict? Yes. Like, was that predetermined into you, me? You, were, you had a I, horrible I agree. sin yeah, nature. No, I, I agree. The I'm decision, on the same page. I'm let, just throwing another the alternative. The decisions that your parents made to keep you from going to an addict at a, whatever age. You mean your environment what, matters? Yes. Are you still one? Hmm? I think, yeah, I have to battle an addictive nature. I have to be, I have to die to myself repeatedly, which is, again, I think scripture says to die to yourself daily. 
you want my take on this? I think everyone's got a cross and a burden to bear. And some people's may be homosexuality, but if you're going to die to yourself to follow him, then that's your cross to bear for it. I think mine is acknowledging the fact that I was born with a very addictive personality. And I have to be honest with myself, my wife and with God about what I'm allowing that nature to control in my life. I am trying to snuff it out, kill it constantly daily, 100%, 100%. And so I, I think I fall more in that line of we all have our own cross to bear, which is what I go back to earlier. You don't know what anyone's sacrificed or been called to give up to get and obtain where they are. That's why you can't measure. You can't compare. That's not healthy. That's, that's getting closer to covetousness if you start doing that. But, you know, I think we were all given some level of burden to bear. And if you truly believe God is a just God, and I do, then and, and if you feel on this earth the burden of, of sexual partners – is a burden to bear and you can deny it for your life. I believe in my heart of hearts that your reward in heaven would match the sacrifice made on earth. I truly, I truly do. Okay. But I think all of us are called to die to ourselves and give up a, a different aspect of the sin nature we're built with. Right. Cause we all don't have the same one, but we all have sin and sin can magnify or not magnify, but can, can show itself in different ways In everyone's life. Sin pops up a different way. And, you know, I do agree with you that I think a lot of that is the product of the environment of your upbringing and, and what those are. Um, yeah. But, and all that to say, too, <clears throat> just to finish that thought, I don't believe if you were born or if you're gay, then you're, you're less than or bad or anything. As a believer, I think that that's something you should take to the cross, take to our Savior, pray through and pray about. But Scripture is clear as far as what believers do, and it's not included in that. Yeah. Just like if you have a new re- doing drugs to feel good as a new included spirit in that, or finding a substitute, idolizing anything that <clears> makes <throat> me feel comfortable uh, apart from God, because that's, you know, addiction isn't always just narcotics. It can. This makes me feel good. So I'm going to do it. Maybe it's video games. And so I put video games on a pedestal. disassociation. Maybe it's 100 percent. It's something to withdraw me from my current troubles in life. And that's yeah. that's where my addiction comes. And in. it couldn't just with, it couldn't even it's not even just withdraw uh, from the current status of life. It's to oh, okay. snuff, <coughs> hide, um, you know, um, stump out your your feelings, um, stump out the you know whatever the busyness, yeah. boredom. I mean, the list can go on. Yeah, I used to call it thawing out when I would stop doing drugs because I'd feel th- I'd feel things I never wanted to feel and never felt before. That's why I called it thawing out because it's it's literally like layer by layer. You're like, oh, this is new. I don't like this. We'll go get high again, or or learn how to deal and cope. Okay, learn how to. So it's oh, because you didn't like the one hundred feeling that was coming on. One hundred percent. Because addiction, lo- <clears throat> you, you you like you said, you use a substance, a substance or whatever it's it is. It's just a dopamine dump. You're just looking for a different dopamine dump. Yeah. So I mean, it, it could be anything. I mean, any substance or any addictive thing that you have, um, you do it, and you, by nature, it. it Becomes a priority. Becomes a priority, and your emotions are <coughs> are set aside. Mm-hmm. Um, they're either stuffed in the trunk or out the car. Um, so yeah, it's it's it, it and is. Then you'll have when to deal when with you them start later. to detox, when you start to detox, unless you stay high, then you don't have to deal with them. Whether you de- you detox from substances or anything, <coughs> but once you're on the detox, you start getting these emotions that you didn't know that you could feel or you felt them before, but not as. Um, as potent on or, steroids. Yeah. yeah. So it's called swelling. And when that happens, <clears throat> uh, like, you know, Jacob could be in the car and you just break out crying and he's like, what am I, what am I, what's going on? What do I feel lonely all the time? Oh, I, I feel lonely because I felt lonely my whole life, but I'm, I've been using, um, sex something or drugs to, or something. To make something. me not lonely to, to even working out. People are addicted to the gym to make me feel dump. to like, make me feel good again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all I want to do is feel good. And then that goes into the, all that other stuff. But there's, if anyone has That's an addiction, um, there's a podcast called The Addictive Mind. It's a very good podcast. Um, Thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. It's a <coughs> shameless plug. It's a really good podcast. <laughs> okay. Uh, while we continue to land the plane. Um, I are, we have, are we still landing I've, gears yeah, out? Are we I like the f- wheels are out? We overshot the airport. It's just circling. Yeah, it was okay. Hey, runway's not clear. <clears throat> uh, let's land this. I said this before. Uh, Catholics believe you have to be purified before you get to heaven. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm just going to real quickly go through all the scripture I had on So grace. along that line, too, you guys realize there was a washing pool right outside the temple. You Bethesda? Had, you had to wash and rinse, like washing away your sins before you could go participate in the temple. 
and any kind of activities. Yeah. Like, so that was even then, just dirty. to say that with like, you know, Catholics believe you had to be da, da, da. So did they, any time to enter into his presence, because he wasn't in our hearts yet. Right. You had to ceremonially cleanse yourself. You had to be clean. Yeah. Uh, grace, just justice was satisfied at the cross. Period. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For it is by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. You can't do it. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. You can't boast about it. You can't do it. You cannot do anything to earn everlasting life. Paul says that all my life's work is scubalon, which is hot garbage. Say it three times. Is that where we get scuba scubalon? Scubalon. 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 means scubalon. hot garbage. Rome has perverted the gospel in such a way that it's not Christ and his righteousness alone. The Bible teaches that those who have faith in Jesus alone are accounted righteous apart from their works. Looking at you, Abraham. And God does not count their sins against them. That's in Romans 4. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Dude, yeah, seriously, anyone who has questions on this, Romans 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah. And then, yeah, I won't read this whole scripture because it just it goes through it all. Romans 7, 14 through 20. Is talking about the the law is spiritual. I'm unspiritual. I was sold, you know, into I was into sin. I was a slave to sin, literally. And now I'm not. Hmm. Um, but, but I will. But you're only not because of your position and relationship with Christ. Yes. Yeah. That's His the righteousness only has made me righteous. Correct. That's yep. the only. Sorry, way I'm I not trying to it. change it. Just caveat. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'll leave with this. You have to renew your mind. Uh, to who you are in the spirit, not in your flesh, not in your mind, the spirit. As a born-again believer, you no longer have a nature to sin. However, there is a law that's working against your new nature, your new spirit. It's called the law of sin, and it's always fighting against you. The law of the spirit of life has made you free from the law of sin and death. If you're born again, you're not compelled to sin anymore if you're struggling, it's because you have not renewed your mind to the new spirit on the inside of you. What do you mean by that? You have a new spirit. You have to so renew you, your mind by reading the scripture, which will tell you who you are. <clears throat> Instead of watching Netflix, which will tell you who you're not. God's word will get inside you when you read it. That's how you renew your mind. Uh, that's why Paul said, when I look at the Bible, I'm looking at a mirror. I'm looking at the real person that I am. When I walk away, you know, when you look at a mirror, you fix yourself up and you look at everything, you walk away and you forget who you were looking at. When you look at the word of God, you're looking at who you are, that new person. The further away from it we get, the further we forget what and we And that's like. why you struggle mm -hmm. with all this outside stuff. It's, you, can't, you can't find it. You're fighting against it. Which is why it says to meditate on it day and night. Constantly remind <clears throat> remind yourself of who you are. We we push that a lot in the youth group is identity, because I you know for these kids nowadays it's terrifying. It's it's to fit in socially in some instances. All you have to do is be willing to to do this. Yeah, and it seems like such <clears throat> a small sacrifice, but as an adult looking down and like having been through it, I'm like, man, I know where that ends up. I know where that ends up. So we're big on pushing identity. Know who you are in Christ, and you're less likely, less willing to accept where you fit in in society. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're less likely to, to looking at the external. lessen yourself to fit in <clears throat> somewhere else. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's two, two portion, knowing who you are, knowing what he says about you, but also believing it. You can read it all day in the sun, but if, if you don't believe it, and I mean, believe it, it doesn't matter what you think you, who you are. You got to believe it. Going well, back to true, renewing yeah. the mind, going back to renewing your mind. You said it's not a physical thing. Did you just say um, you have to renew your mind to the new you on the inside, because mm. your mind your mind is still have your mind your entire life has been programmed with an old sin nature. It's inherently bad. It's been birth. it's it's been programmed, and that's why we have to unprogram it with the new the spirit on the inside of us. The new spirit's like I'm alive to God now. Mm -hmm. I'm not compelled to sin. I'm alive in Christ. Why am I doing this stuff? What is happening here? Mm. But to Jason's and that's the point, struggle Paul was. You talking. only get there if you truly believe it. Yeah. Otherwise, and that's you don't the care struggle enough. Paul was talking about. Why do I do these things? I don't want I don't to do these things. That you don't even care enough. I think it's just there's a lot of a lot of let's just say baggage trauma. Uh, you can 
I use the word trauma. There's a lot of trauma that is taught, that is dug enough neural pathways in your brain <coughs> to that th- that you develop a your own sense of self because that's let's say that's your 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 sinful nature. You have developed. Oh, you know what? I'm I am this. Yeah. This is who I am. Right. I I I can't you believe that. In be, you believe that. Right. And then by renewing your mind. When by renewing your mind and believing, you do change the the anatomy of your brain. You change the neuro neurological pathways. Yeah. You change the uh, you you change all of that to where it, it they've shown over the um they've shown they done studies that show if you just give affirmations in the mirror, and you look at yourself in the mirror and you give affirmations, that that changes the neurological chemistry of your brain. Yeah. Uh, daily affirmations are huge. Yeah. Because, and they say, you don't believe them. You don't believe them for like the first, I don't know, they said 40 days. And then you start, your brain starts to be like, okay, well, maybe I am. Yeah, maybe, I, right. maybe I do got that dog in me. Right. I'm a dog. Maybe right? people do like me. May, yeah. Or maybe they don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, renewing your what mind. What if we're wrong? Um, I think that's that's the, that's where it starts. Yeah. I don't think it's, you know, the, when they said the renewing of your mind, actually, th- what they were talking about when, when Paul was talking about that, the, he meant the mind. When he meant the mind, he meant the whole thing, the, your, your heart. They're connected. Because that's, that's when they talked about mind, they talked about the, the heart, the mind, and the soul as one. It wasn't just, um, you know, people like to differentiate between, oh, well, it's not in your mind and heart, you know, whatever. But it's it's all one. What he's talking about, renewing, do it, do it, or try to at least. Do We're it. all trying to. <clears throat> J- Jacob's R- trying. I'm right. trying. Do it. Yeah. Hey, We're no. Trying. Remember, behavior drives emotion. Your emotions don't drive your behavior. Mm. Oh, I got another one for you. Uh, this guy told me today. Um, shout out to Tom Ryan. What's up, he Tom? Said, shout out. He said. Um, you know, emotions are a lot like kids. You don't want them driving, but you also don't want them in the trunk either. Mm. That's money. I'm going to let that be your final thought. Yeah. Today. That's, yeah. Any final thoughts, Jacob? What he said. <laughs> All right. Uh, final thoughts for me is uh, make sure you renew your mind. If you're born again, if you're not born again, uh, contact me. Slip into my DMs. I can uh, I can educate you on that. I can help you out with that. Make sure you visit our website, www.bottomofthat.com. Check out our blog for all of our show notes and resource material. From there, you can also find us on our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. If you've been watching us on uh, YouTube, Rumble, and BitChute, and you like this episode, please do me a favor. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. And if you're listening on any other podcasting platform, please do me a favor. Follow us, subscribe to us, and turn on notifications so you never miss when we publish an episode. If you did not like this episode, I thank you for listening this long. Tune in next week when you might hear Jason say, Metanoia means changing one's mind, and that's the renewing. That's the verse, renewing. In that in the scripture, it's metanoia. It's Greek for changing one's mind. I thought it was going to be shorter than that. No. No.